Hey guys, welcome back to Zenwalk's channel. Today we are taking a look at the XGAC Death Scythe. Now, the Wing Boy Band is almost there, except the Shandong Gundam. Well, Uwe is getting a lot of hate, isn't it? But we saw the teaser before, so Shandong is pretty much coming next year. Now, Death Scythe is a very good design. I really don't understand why people like the EW version more. I mean, come on, TV version looks like the actual Grim Ripper. Oh, by the way, Live Lands Heaven just came out, so you guys should probably expect the Death Scythe help will be PB. Joke's on you, Bandai. I'm good with my Robot Damage version. You know, it's very BS if they put Death Scythe Hell into PB because Duo uses Gundam as much as Hero. It's popular, mate. About the box art, I gotta say, Bandai's artists are getting better and better. Look at this cool pose with the effects 10 out of 10. But at the same time, it's very sad too. If Bandai can spend some good arts on the PB cover, I might consider to not rent too much. Anyway, look at the side of the box first and let's review the runners. The original Death Scythe don't have a lot of complicated structure or weapons, which is why the runners are not that many. In my opinion, Death Scythe is a very good kit for beginners. Very easy to build and the look is amazing. Again, I said it for like the 10,000th time, but if Bandai can put that much effort into PB, I am happy to buy it. Most of the time, regular releases are doing good job, but PB is just like testing how long can we tolerate BS. Man, imagine M91 and Power Rider got the new kit treatments. My rent videos will be pointless if they put more efforts. Anyway, even though I have the ROD Death Scythe Hell, but I'm hoping the marketing team can have some mercy and put Death Scythe Hell into the regular release line. Well, the chatting is over and I'll see you in the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the XGAC Death Hive review. So this is the finishing of it. Well, for a small Gamper, Death Hive is at a high rank position. A lot of colors are under gate. The technologies are just like the modern regular releases now. It's very good and friendly to out of box builders. Generally, this Gamper don't have things for me to pick. So for this review, it's pretty positive. Now, I don't have the Robot Damage Death Hive, so I can't do comparison or anything like that. But this XG is a worthy Gamper for everyone. Let's take a closer look. All right, just like the usual flow, we are always starting from the head. The TV version got a smaller antenna compared to the one on EW version. The overall head design is more on the dark color side. In my opinion, the EW version added too many unnecessary colors on the body. Death Scythe is a stealth attack MS, so of course, the colors needs to be darker to cover itself better. The TV version head did a good job about it. The TV version is sharper and felt more vizia, but the EW version lost that element and the face just felt very puffed. As for the articulations, moving up and down is just like a standard XG. Side to side is not very good because the chin blocked the movement, but the articulations are good enough to pose. The chest is a very standard Gundam chest. It's not like the awesome ribcage design on the Death Side Hell. The structure and text are quite simple, so I don't have a lot of things to comment about the chest. However, just like the other Gundams from Wang, you need to paint the machine cannons yourself. Let's check out the movements. It's a big ball joint at the middle, so moving front and back is relying on that small ball joint between the layers. Swaying side to side is impossible because there's no gap for it to move. Turning 360 is possible, but it will be a bit harder to turn. The shoulders are smaller than the EW version, but the scale is very comfortable and looked very good as a bat wing symbolization. I admire the fact that Bandai didn't give you those bad stickers for the gray parts. Part separation is a good decision, since the structure in the shoulders will block the arms to lift, so you can move this little thruster to let your death side lift the arms. For the articulations, 360 is just like the usual. Lifting is 90 after you move away the thruster. The arms can move front and back to allow a better scythe pose. Arms can rotate just like standard XGs. Bending is touching the shoulders, so it's good enough. Other than the weapon hands on the death scythe, you'll get a pair of open hands and the heat solo hands from Sandrock. All right, this kit only got two weapons, so I'll just quickly introduce them. Starting from the beam scythe, you can choose two blades, a long or a short one, depend on your pose. The TV scythe can move and change the blade's direction. Within the 90 degrees, you can do what you want. 
Since this is a XG, so there's no way to shorten the scythe and store it on the back skirt. Bandai gave you a separate piece to recreate the storage. However, if you look at the back, it's very bad hollow surface. I personally think you should fill it up to make it look better. The left forearm is the Buster Shield. I have to say it again, but the shield on the EW version sucks. Look at the TV version, very cool and sharp. This is 1000 times better than the EW one. Bandai did reuse the MG structure and gave some gears in the shield. When you move one side, it will open the whole thing at the same time. You can put a blade into the shield and this is the Buster Shield ready to fly. The waist of the TV version is cooler, the color scheme just fit the death side really well. The red at the middle is a sticker but meh, that's a normal thing for now. The front skirts will move together is around 90 degrees. The side skirt can lift a bit because it will bump into the body. Back skirt is pretty nice and moving more than 45. That's enough for you to make some wide poses. The legs are very detailed, I like the very clear lines and it's just awesome. The death side TV is simpler than the EW1. I guess I like a normal knee armor than a poked out armor. The run part that you need to repaint is the small circle on the feet. A Gundam marker will solve that problem. Again, just like the modern XGs, there's a joint to adjust the legs position at the middle of the waist, which I still hate it. As for the articulations, front kick is a standard 90, side kick is close to 90, back kick is close to 90 again. If you want the bending to be better, unlock the knee and you can now bend a slightly off U shape, which is pretty good for XG. The whole feet will move from front and back along with the guard. Side to side is just like a standard XG. Turning is bad because the guard blocked the movements. A surprise of this XG is that it got separate foot joints to move up and down. That's pretty impressive and rare. The backpack on the TV version is very simple. Not many things I can talk about. The hyper jammers are the ones that protrudes from the backpack. The big thruster at the middle is a ball joint, so the movement is very poor. The hyper jammers can move, but you won't use this joint because the jammers will always be facing front. We are at the end now, that side is a simple gambler so I can't really come out with some good points to talk about. Well, this gambler is very cheap and the quality is above average if you ask me. Now, we know that that side hell is pretty much a PB. I know it's a very sad news but I still hope that I can slap my face and prove me wrong. As I said, considering Duo used the that side hell and performed a lot in the show, putting it in PB really don't make sense. But never expect too much from Bandai, especially the marketing team is basically from EA. I miss the old Bandai. Yeah, if you're looking for a good and cheap gampla, that side is your choice for sure. Forgive me that I'm not uploading much during the recent days, a lot of sickness and body pain really drained my spirit. No worries, the HLMS new series and more reviews are in progress, so make sure you subscribe to me and hit the bell next to it to get the updates. Like this video, join my Discord and follow my Instagram. All the links include donation is down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.